okay guys now in this video let's discuss about receptors now what exactly are receptors receptors are the proteins on which ligands will come and bind either they will activate or inactivate don't confuse ligands are uh, ligands can be anything somewhere from like a ligand can be a hormone or a ligand can be a drug or a ligand can be a toxin so ligands will come and bind to the receptor and either they can activate the receptor or inactivate the receptor okay now these receptors are of how many types broadly these receptors are classified into two types what are they intracellular receptors or extracellular receptors extra cellular or intra cellular receptors intracellular or extracellular so what is the difference if a receptor is present on the cell surface on the cell membrane then it is called as extracellular receptor or cell surface receptor if the receptor is present in inside the cell which means either the receptor can be present in the cytoplasm or even the receptor can be present in the nucleus so intracellular receptors are of again how many types cytoplasmic receptors or intranuclear receptors two types are there so this is a broad classification of receptors here i just want you to know the examples of extracellular receptors extracellular receptors mean the receptors which are present on the cell surface on the uh, cell membrane what are the examples first example is very important receptor g protein coupled receptor g protein coupled receptor the second example which i want you to know is tyrosine kinase receptor third example is jack receptors are janus kinase receptors and serine kinase receptors okay these are the different types of receptors which i want you to know for the exam all these receptors gpcrs okay this g protein coupled receptors they are shortly abbreviated as g protein coupled receptors gpcrs now guys let's start with the g protein coupled receptor now this g protein coupled receptor is also known as serpentine receptor or seven pass receptor the serpentine receptor or seven pass receptor why if i show you lipid membrane like this okay this is the cell membrane now this receptor is having a very uh, funny structure it's just like a snake see 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 times so this receptor is passing through the cell membrane for 7 times okay it's passing through the cell membranes for 7 times so that's why it's called as seven pass receptor and as it's just looking like a snake it's called as serpentine receptor and this gpcr g protein coupled receptor is also an example of trans membrane receptor why it is called as trans membrane receptor why because it's passing through the membrane from outside to inside okay now important point i want you to know here is see this is gpcr g protein coupled receptor now important point is see there are two domains which you need to know the first domain here is this one this is the site or this is the domain where the ligand will come and bind the ligand means ligand it can be a hormone it can be anything it can be a drug or anything now this is the hormone binding domain or the ligand binding domain ligand binding domain okay see try to understand like this for example there are hormones which are derived out of proteins 
they cannot cross the cell membrane so they have to act on a receptor which is present on the cell membrane so protein hormones they will come and they will bind to this ligand binding domain and stimulate this receptor okay now there is one more domain which is present inside the cell okay inside the cell now here to this g protein coupled receptor there are three subunits attached okay just i am showing you in a very simple way so that you can understand it see there is alpha subunit there is beta subunit and gamma subunit so inside the cell to this gpcr three domains are attached alpha subunit beta subunit and gamma subunit now important point is this alpha subunit whenever it's not active whenever the receptor is not activated now it's bind to g dp okay g dp it's having gdp now after knowing this let's talk about a few important points when this gpcr g protein coupled receptor whenever this gpcr is activated what will happen alpha subunit okay alpha subunit will move away okay will move away from beta and gamma this is the first point to know whenever you stimulate this receptor alpha subunit is going to detach from there and it will move away it will move away and we will do what we'll discuss next important point which you need to know is whenever you stimulate the g protein coupled receptor yes alpha subunit is going to move away there is no doubt now to this alpha subunit it's not g dp which is going to bind now g tp will bind it will bind with g tp and will break this g tp into g dp so g tp is getting broken down to g dp g tp is just like atp so energy is getting released so whenever you broke down the g tp energy is being released now this energy is utilized for the reactions inside the cell for the changes inside the cell so what i am saying whenever you stimulate the g protein coupled receptor now inside the cell alpha subunit is going to move away from beta and gamma now this alpha subunit it's having which activity gtpase activity this alpha subunit is having gtpase activity which means it will take up the gtp and will broke down the gtp and will release the energy this energy is utilized for reactions inside the cell after this let's talk about a few important points about alpha subunit okay now alpha subunits are of different different types for example there is this alpha subunit which is stimulatory gs okay now g protein coupled receptor with the alpha subunit named as yes gs or alpha s yes. you can take it anyway okay alpha s s for stimulatory s for stimulatory now there is one more type of alpha subunit that is g i i for inhi bitori and one more subunit that is gq and one more type which is g t t for trans ducin now you will get it out so what is the importance about different types of this alpha subunits how they are going to be helpful see now let me show you here this one g protein coupled receptor you can say yes it's a seven pass receptor g protein coupled receptor now i am showing you different g protein coupled receptor i am showing you four different types of g protein coupled receptors okay i am just showing you alpha subunit okay only alpha subunit i am showing you one is having alpha yes or gs that's a stimulatory second one is having inhibitory and third one is having g q or alpha q and the fourth one is having g t 
ओके जी एस जी मिहिदी ना व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस इन हैविंग डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ दिस सब यूनिट्स इज दैट व्हेन नेवर यू स्टिमुलेट दिस व्हेन नेवर यू स्टिमुलेट दिस जी एस टाइप ऑफ G protein coupled receptor. Now what will happen is now this G stimulator, it's alpha component, right? Now this GS will detach. It will move away from beta and gamma. Now it will stimulate. Okay, it will it will utilize the GTP, convert the GTP into GDP with the energy whatever came. It will activate an enzyme called as adenylyl. cyclase okay now this g stimulatory is stimulating an enzyme called as adenylyl cyclase now this adenylyl cyclase is helping in the production of c a m p c a m p cyclic a m p now this cyclic a m p is called as secondary messenger okay now we have st started with the first secondary messenger that is c a m p now we will get it out why it is called as secondary messenger sir see hormones cannot come into the cell for taking out or bringing out the actions hormone is only touching the cell surface or the ligand is only going to act on the cell surface it cannot come into the cell so this is the primary message see message is coming to the cell from outside now the message might be coming in the form of a hormone or might be coming in the form of a toxin or it might be coming in the form of a drug but the primary messenger is a hormone like uh, it's it can be a hormone it can be an endotoxin or it can be a drug or anything now whenever it binds to the receptor now receptor will be activated now this receptor will produce certain substances in the cell now those certain substances will bring out the necessary changes according to the hormone okay now here whenever you stimulate the receptors g stimulatory receptors they will activate an enzyme called as adenylyl cyclase now this adenylyl cyclase increases the camp now the camp what it will do now the cyclic camp will activate protein kinases okay especially that protein kinase a now what what exactly is this protein kinase is an enzyme now camp is activating camp is activating the protein kinases now this protein kinase is the name itself it's a kinase is the one which does phosphorylation you would have said in your biochemistry so protein kinases will cause phosphorylation of proteins which proteins necessary proteins whatever the protein is necessary right now according to the whatever the uh, hormone came now those proteins are phosphorylated now phosphorylated proteins are activated they will do their job okay so they will brought out the uh, whatever the reaction is needed so what i am saying you whenever you stimulate the gs receptors okay uh, sorry whenever you stimulate the g protein coupled receptors now this gs are the stimulatory component okay alpha stimulatory component is going to activate adenylyl cyclase increases the camp levels the camp is secondary messenger okay it's a secondary messenger it will activate the protein kinases which will cause the phosphorylation inside the cell now let's take second scenario when you stimulate the other type of g protein coupled receptors where intracellularly the domain is g inhibitory now whenever you stimulate these receptors now this g inhibitory component the alpha component is going to be moving away now this alpha component by using the energy it will inhibit inhibit the adenylyl cyclase okay whenever the adenylyl cyclase is inhibited camp levels will go down protein kinases activity will go down the phosphorylation of the proteins inside the cell will go down so everything is going to go down cell will become inactive okay now what about this gq whenever you stimulate this gq receptors what will happen okay different hormone is coming and acting on the gq receptors now what will happen is this gq okay is going to activate secondary messengers or it's going to produce secondary messengers inside the cell the secondary messengers are called as ip3 ip3 inositol triphosphate 
and DAG, okay, inositol triphosphate and DAG, DAG for diacylglycerol. Now, this IP3 and DAG, they are going to cause influx of calcium into the cell. Calcium influx, we all know calcium is the one which activates the enzymes, which activates the enzymatic machinery, makes the cell active, calcium. So, by bringing the calcium into the cell, the IP3 DAG system will also make the cell active. So, we can say this calcium is acting as a secondary messenger. So, how many types of secondary messengers we have seen so far? There are two types of secondary messengers we have seen. The first type of secondary messenger is CAMP and the second type of secondary messenger is IP3 DAG calcium system. Okay. Now, after this, let us talk a one important point about this GT. Okay. As there is no space here, let me write it down here. So, whenever you act activate this GT okay T for transducing I have already taught you so what does I mean by whenever you activate the G protein coupled receptor in which inside the GT component is there now what will happen is they will increase the C GMP levels okay by activating this transducin CGMP levels are elevated. Now, the CGMP is also a secondary messenger. It is also acting as a secondary messenger and brings out the necessary changes inside the cell. An important point is this GT it is present in rods. Okay, In the rod cells of the eyes, this GT is present. So, what I am trying to put into your mind is, first we have seen different types of hormones. And in this video, we are seeing different types of receptors, extracellular receptors, intracellular receptors. In extracellular receptors, one important subgroup is G protein coupled receptors. Now, the G protein coupled receptors are of different different types based on the alpha subunit. Now, alpha subunit can be stimulatory, alpha subunit can be inhibitory, or alpha subunit can be of GQ type or it can be of GT type. If it is G stimulatory type, Whenever you activate the G protein coupled receptor, whenever the ligand binds to G protein coupled receptor, now this G stimulatory type will be separated, the alpha subunit will be separated, activates adenyl cyclase, adenyl cyclase converts ATP into CAMP and the CAMP is the secondary messenger. Now the CAMP will cause or the CAMP will activate protein kinases, the protein kinases will cause phosphorylation of the proteins and the cell will become active. Same is opposite with the G inhibitory component. When you activate such a type of G protein coupled receptor where the intracellular alpha domain is inhibitory in nature, whenever you stimulate them, now the entire pathway going to be inhib inhibited, the adenyl cyclase will be inhibited, the CAMP levels will go down, protein kinases activity will go down and the phosphorylation of proteins will also go down. Okay. In the same way, whenever you activate such a type of G protein coupled receptor where the intracellular domain is of GQ type, now what will happen? Now this GQ will activate diacylglycerol as well as inositol triphosphate. Both of them will help in influx of calcium. Calcium will come into the cell, makes the enzymes active and also helps in bringing out the necessary changes inside the cell. And last one is transducin, present in the rod cells. Okay, it helps in production of CGMP, that CGMP is acting as a secondary messenger, brings out the necessary changes in the cell. So, just briefly, we have seen out framework, different types of hormones, different types of receptors. Now, in the next video, we will see what are the different types of hormones using different types of G protein coupled receptors. Okay, so which hormone is using which type of G protein coupled receptors, we will see in the next video. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.